It's HPR, All Things Considered, and I'm Dave Lawrence with our latest episode of Road Stories. Find all the interviews and links to subscribe to the podcast at hawaiipublicradio.org slash roadstories or search for HPR Road Stories where you get your podcasts. And today, we're welcoming Weird Al Yankovic, the song parody guy. We've been spending most of our lives living in an Amish paradise. Woo! My, 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 Another one rides the bus. I'm mumbling, and I'm screaming, and I don't know what I'm singing. I feel like a surgeon. got shows Saturday, March 25th at the Blaisdell Concert Hall, and Sunday, March 26th at the MAC, and joins us now, Al. Hey. Hey, Dave. How you doing? What's going on, brother? Not much. Appreciate you doing this. And and you know what? We had Jim Kimo West on, uh, filling us in on some of your connections. That's great. A HANA connection? Yeah. We've lived part-time in HANA for the last 20 years. Dearly love it there, and we try to get out as often as we can. You had done maybe the uh, Alice Cooper New Year's thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we tend to spend uh, our, our holidays uh, in, in Hana, and which also lines up with the Alice Cooper Maui Food Bank benefit. So uh, I, I've done that quite a few times, and that's always a blast. Now, for folks who are no doubt maybe fans, maybe they also have heard you not long ago with uh, Terry on Fresh Air, tell folks about what's in store at the shows. They may be very curious. Well, uh, the thing is, with, with this particular tour, it's, it's a bit of a departure from our normal tours. And, and I'm sorry that the first time we're ever playing Hawaii, <laughs> we're, not, we're not playing the hits. Normally, we, we do a, a full multimedia show with costume changes and props and film clips and on a big LED screen, and it's like a big uh, show. And uh, that's always one of the reasons we never played Hawaii with that show, is it would be exorbitantly expensive to, to ship all our stuff to Hawaii right. to do that. Uh, and this, this show is, is um, sort of the no-frills show. We're, we're not doing any costume changes. Uh, basically, it's just me and the same band that, that I've had, Chemo and the other guys. We just walk on a stage and sit down on the stools, and we just play our songs. So it's a very intimate uh, kind of affair. It's very, you know, we we want to uh, feel like we're playing in your living room. Uh, And we're we're playing kind of a lot of deep cuts, you know, because we usually play uh, the big parody hits in uh, in the normal show, and we just want to do do a show more for the hardcore fans or the people that wanted to hear things that they don't they don't normally hear uh, in in a live setting. And that's another interesting part because, as we know, when people are listening to the radio. We have a lot of folks on board who have different varying degrees of familiarity with any of the artists that we speak to. So Al, what he's also describing is a lot of the the material, he's known for those parodies that a lot of us have grown up with, really. Uh, But you kind of alluded to it. Tell folks, your albums are also filled with a lot more than what people have heard on the radio or seen on MTV. Yeah, about half of my songs uh, are original, and uh, they're not serious. I mean, they're they're hopefully (laughs) as funny uh, as the parodies. In fact, a lot of fans actually uh, prefer the originals over the parodies. But they're just not based exactly on somebody else's music. Now, not a lot of these original songs are pastiches, which means that they sound like another artist. There's a song that we do, like in the style of The Doors, and a song in the style of R.E.M., and, and things like that. And so that's a good follow-up to explain what's in store, too, at the shows, right? There will be a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, and it is it is a high-energy show. I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, <laughs> it's not going to put you to sleep. I, I think that even if, if you're... You know, if you're going to, if you're going expecting to hear "Eat It" and "Like a Surgeon," you'll be disappointed. But so I just want to <laughs> forewarn people what they're getting into. But uh, you know, if if you're just open to having a good time, and you know, it's it's a great comedy show, and the band, you know, is amazing. Um, so I, I think it's a good time. I don't think uh, unless you have high expectations or unrealistic uh, <laughs> expectations, I think you'll enjoy it. Great. So it's kind of a mix, I guess. Am I reading it right between some of those songs that people do expect? and then a lot of other things, they, they will be a surprise to them? Yeah, you know, and again, you know, we're, we're focusing on the originals, um, originals over the entire course of uh, our career. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a literally a different show every night, uh, which is something that we can't do in our normal tour because when you do the costume changes and all that, right. it's got to be the exact same set list because one costume change leads into the next bit, and we have to be prepared for that, and it's got to be the same all the time. And you know what is also cool is all these venues that you brought that last tour to, and sometimes when we talk to people, I'm always curious what your 
sometimes it's a you know, there's a personal reason, or sometimes you grew up going to something. Any venues? Well, I, I have to say, you know, I, I'd never even been to Carnegie Hall before, but it, it's been it's generally known as the most prestigious uh, venue in the world, and it was something that I was honestly pretty nervous about, <laughs> uh, just because I didn't want to mess up at Carnegie Hall. But uh, the show went great. It was a very emotional experience for me, and that was amazing. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from Hawaii, though, because up till now, the band and I have played in every single state right. uh, in the U.S., <laughs> except for Hawaii. It's, <laughs> it's been the one glaring omission, so finally we get to uh, do our final state. <laughs> and it's your, where you're a sometime resident, too, right? I mean, do you have a... That's right, yeah. You don't have that connection. Hometown boy. You don't have any connections like that to other states, right? Or do you have a bunch of part-time residencies? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, just uh, I, I live mostly in L.A., and then whenever I can get away, I'm in, in Maui. Radio plays a big part in how Al not only has reached people, but how he got his start, too. And radio legend Dr. Demento... Ironically, I was introduced to Dr. Demento as a little kid by my late mother, and your mother had forbidden you from <laughs> actually listening to him on the radio, and I thought that was such a great juxtaposition. Well, Dr. Demento changed my life in a very real way. I mean, um, you know, nowadays you have YouTube and, and other portals on the Internet, and, and you can get your stuff out there a lot more easily, but back in the early 80s, uh, and before, I mean, th there wasn't any way for a guy playing the accordion and writing stupid songs <laughs> to get his material heard other than Dr. Demento. And uh, he gave me exposure very early on uh, and encouragement as well. And, and that ultimately led to my record deal. Uh, so if, if Dr. Demento had never existed, I think my life would be completely different today. You sent him a tape? Yeah, I, I sent him a, a tape. Uh, that I recorded in my bedroom, just me and my accordion. Uh, I was maybe 15, 16 years old, and the song was not good, and certainly my my singing was not that polished. Uh, so it was, it was very amateurish and ridiculous, but Dr. Mano just saw something in that recording. You know, he, he was amused by the fact that this teenage boy was playing the accordion <laughs> and thinking he was cool. <laughs> you know, so he thought, this, this guy deserves a leg up. So he, he gave me some uh, uh, airplay, and, and I flipped out, and uh, and I just kept sending him tapes. What a connection to, to, uh, to the business, too. And then when I think about this film, what a uh, the the weird Al weird the Al Yankovic story. It's a correct title and the soundtrack to it as well. It, that, that's got to be a, a kind of a marker in a person's life when they're doing a film about themselves. It absolutely is, and I, I highly recommend it. I think everybody should have a big Hollywood biopic made about them <laughs> at least once. It's a very cool thing. You know, it's one of those. It's obviously it's, it's surrealistic. I can't believe <laughs> this actually happened. And uh, the other part of your legacy that I'm curious about when you're ne when you negotiated to do some of these, and I'm sure you, you have probably told these stories many times, but some of these artists like Michael, for example, Michael Jackson. Um, in the process to saying, like, you're going to go and do this tune, can you tell us a little bit of, like, how do you reach out to them, and is there any kind of contact or interaction you and him ever had over it? Well, in, in general, it really depends if I've got a relationship with the artist. I mean, if, if I know the artist, I will contact them directly because that's always the easiest and most efficient. But in most cases, and Michael being one of them, I, I didn't know Michael Jackson <laughs> at the time, certainly. And uh, so it was a matter of my manager talking to his representatives and all that. But eventually got to Michael, and he personally signed off on it. And in fact, there is a contract that exists somewhere in this world with my signature next to Michael Jackson's signature uh -huh. saying that we are the co-writers of Eat It. And he, he really kind of uh, turned the key in a lot of ways because prior to Michael Jackson's blessing, there were a lot of artists and songwriters that were sort of waffling, going, I don't know about this Weird Al guy, and they weren't, uh, they were a little hesitant to give me the, uh, permission. Right, yeah, it'll open that uh, that door, the credibility, you're saying. Yeah. And you ever interact with him personally? A couple times briefly. I went to one of his concerts and met him backstage after the show, and I went to one of his video shoots, but he, he was very sweet. Cool. Weird Al Yankovic. First gigs in your second home, and it's Saturday, March 25th at the uh, Blaisdell Concert Hall at the MAC, Sunday, March 26th. Hope you had fun today. I sure did. Thanks so much. Stay safe. Thank you. Take care.
Turkeys are starving in Japan, so eat it, just eat it.